NDC General Secretary contests claims by the new patriotic party irregularities occurred in the corner to the 2012 presidential election as the respondents opened their case today. The number of polling stations, they began by claiming 4,000 plus, then it went to 11,900 plus. I think the latest figure is uh, 11,138 or something. I don't know whether they will change it before the verdict. The subject of bad faith generated controversy and heated debate between lawyers for the petitioners and the NDC. It's nowhere in their pleadings and in his affidavit. These are very serious matters. It's nowhere to make such a serious allegation that the petitioners said the elections were free and fair. Claim of bad faith. Would you yeah. continue your answer? My Lord, I did raise an objection about what? My Lord, you have previously ruled in respect of the allegation of bad faith. Tonight, we find out if the standoff means anything for the trial. This is Top Story with Evans Mensah. Top Story is brought to you by Bond Financial Services, your successor passion, Belacqua Mineral Water, the new generation water, Blue Rose Limited, Shelter for All, as well as MyJoyOnline.com and Star Life Assurance. My name is Francis Aben. Many were anxious to see him take the witness box in the election petition before the Supreme Court. Today, it happened. General Secretary of the NDC, Johnson Esiedun Ketia, mounted the witness box to open the case of the first and third respondents in the election petition. Johnson Esiedun Ketia is leading evidence on behalf of President John Mahama and the NDC. Led by Chachuchi Kata, the NDC General Secretary challenged claims by the petitioners that there was overvoting, voting without biometric verification, and duplication of serial numbers on pink sheets, which collectively tainted the outcome of the 2012 polls. It is only where there is the, the number of votes in the box exceed the number of people who are entitled to vote. That is where you have overvoting, and that is what leads to automatic cancellation. Now, my lord, it is entirely, it is entirely possible that when uh, a voter approaches a polling station and he takes the presidential ballot paper, he ends up putting it in the parliamentary ballot paper and vice versa. That will lead to a situation where when you open the box, you will see that one of the boxes, uh, I mean the presidential ballot box, you will see that the number of ballots in the box are more than the number of ballots issued. Order. My Lord, in any such Order. in any such incident, what you do is that the first check is turn all the ballot papers face down and you identify the stamp and signature behind. You identify if Somebody has managed to put a paper in the uh, ballot box, either a fake ballot paper or anything inside. You will see that that fake ballot paper will not have the stamp and signature of the presiding officer at that station. But the Asoka polling station pink sheets became the basis for a major objection. This is the same pink sheet Mr. Chikata cross-examined Dr. Baumia on. After counsel for the petitioners, Philip Addison rejected the motion to have the pink sheet tendered in evidence. It sets stage for another. My Lord, we hear the petitioners declaring the elections free, fair and transparent. Then the next moment, when they know they are losing, they will change and be alleging uh, fraud. Then the next moment, when my it Lord, appears my Lord, going my Lord, way, I think we have allowed um, quite some latitude, and the witnesses goes on and on. Can he tell us where it is that the petitioners said that these elections were free and fair? Counsel for the petitioners is not. He's going to have his turn. And I think we should proceed. What I mean in effect is that it is nowhere in their pleadings and in his affidavit. These are very serious matters. It's nowhere to make such a serious allegation that the petitioners said the elections were free and fair. Claim of bad faith. Would you yeah. continue 
your answer. My Lord, I did raise an objection about what? My Lord, you have previously ruled in respect of the allegation of bad faith. That was at the point where I was cross-examining the second petitioner. And in that ruling, your lordships allowed questions that related to the selective manner in which they had collated certain documents in relation to the elections. And your lordships allowed me to proceed with my cross-examination on this allegation which is in our answer to the petition. We can now hear from the spokesperson of the petitioner's legal team, Gloria Kofo, and spokesperson for the NDC legal team, Victor Kojuga Adaudi. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your time on Top Story. Uh, first, Madam Akofo, your team raised two major objections today. Let's deal with the first one on the tendering of the Asokwa polling station pink sheets. Why did you not allow the document to be tendered into evidence? Uh, thank you very much. You will recall that when Dr. Baumia was still in the witness box, Mr. Chikata sought to tender that document, and we objected to it on the grounds that the court had ordered that the petition will be fought on affidavit evidence, and that nowhere had they referred to that document. They had not pleaded it. Their documents that they attached to their amended answer did not have any such annexure, and it ought not be admitted. The court, however, said the witness could identify the document and be allowed to answer questions on it. So it was allowed in as an identified document. Today, Mr. Chikata again proceeded first to have Mr. Asidin Kete identify the document, then went on to ask questions, to which we objected that he could not ask questions on a document which was not before the court. For a document to be before the court, it has to be tendered and marked as an evidence before you can co ask questions on the content of it. So right. that objection was upheld. Then, subsequent to that, he sought to tender it in evidence. And we raised the same issues that the court had asked that affidavit be filed and that the document that the third uh, respondent attached to his affidavit and also of the documents attached to the uh, document of the first respondent had no such documents attached and the objection was upheld and document was rejected and marked as such. Right. Mr. Raudu, you wanted to tender in that pink sheet. How significant was the document for your case? Thank you and good evening to your listeners. Um, that document that on the 8th, I think the 7th or 8th of May, that is when that document was identified. And when it was identified, the court clearly said that we could only tender that document through our own witness. So it's on that basis, one of the basis that Mr. Chikata sought to tender that document since it has already been identified. Two, so they said that we have not pleaded that document, so the document could not be admitted. However, it is not all documents that they have tended that was pleaded. But if the document is relevant, then it could be admitted. But the view of the court is that, yes, the document could not be admitted. It was just to reinforce a point that we've been thinking all along about uh, what they tend to be over voting. Uh, however, in the words and figures that where the words and figures they contradict. Uh, the witness, Dr. Baumia, said that you take the words, leaving the, you take the figures, leaving the words. Mm. However, so far as the court sees that it is rejected, it is not anything so significant that will make a minor to our case. It was just an instance that we wanted to show for everybody to see. Mm. However, we have other pictures that almost the same mistakes have been made and i think the appropriate time will find a time to make all those comparisons okay so, Madam Akufu, yeah. 
Well, let me bring in Madam Akufa at this point. Your team was not also happy about the response by Mr. Sirin Ketia on the MPP declaring the election was free and fair. Are you disappointed your objection for evidence was overruled? Uh, before I say that, can I make a little correction, please? All right, then. Uh, Mr. Daoudi says that they were seeking to establish uh, the point that... Um, there were conflicts between words and figures on the pink sheet. Mm. As I remember correctly, when Mr. Tikata sought to tender that evidence, when Mr. Dr. Baumia was in the box, they said they were going to use it to demonstrate bad faith on our part. And the court said, well, they could have it identified so far as, although they have not uh, exhibited the document, insofar as they were going to use it to demonstrate bad faith on the part of the petitioners, it could be identified. Mm. Having said so, uh, we are not happy about the ruling in respect of uh, the, that line of cross-examination concerning uh, the fact that the petitioners are alleged to have said that the uh, elections were free and fair. Nowhere in our pleadings. And remember, the petition is being fought on the basis of the petition and answers filed by the parties and also on the subsequent affidavits and exhibits that have been tendered. If you look through all these documents, nowhere have the petitioners said that the elections were free and fair. And to need evidence such as that, you must go to the records of the pleadings and indicate where it was said. And we saw that you could indeed evidence on matters that have not been pleaded. Mm. But unfortunately, because that was the point that Justice um, Bafumoni was trying to put across to Mr. Chikata when he explained the basis of our objection. But strangely, the court uh, overruled our objection, and when we sought clarification, we were told that it was a unanimous decision. Right. Um, let me give the final word to Mr. Daudu. Um, you heard Madam Akufu. What was the basis for the question of bad faith since the petitioners argue that was not in their pleadings? Um, I think that when we said bad faith, is that they keep on changing everything that they said. And as she said that our the document that was rejected was to the selectiveness. There were a lot of things that we were going to use that very document for. However, the question that was overruled was that they are saying that they have never made it in their petition or anywhere in the affidavit that they declared the result. They said that the result was free, fair, and transparent. That is our case. We are asserting that this is what you said, and it is in the affidavit of Mr. Asiedun Kintia. And indeed, so and indeed, and indeed, you heard the petitioner's lawyer asking for evidence. No, listen. Yes. So we quoted it. I think after the bad thing, uh, Mr. Kati Chikata quoted the paragraph 19 and 20 of the affidavit of Mr. Adrian Ketia. So that is our case, and that is why he's giving evidence to what he has said in his affidavit, that this is what he did. And uh, the campaign manager or coordinator at that time, Ejako uh, Boache, came out with a press statement, held a press conference, mm. and what he said is what we are saying, that this is the import of his press conference, this is what he said. So if they think that the assertion we are making is contrary to the truth, then in court examination, they will face us with that and say that it is a lie. We never said that. We never did anything to say that this election was free, fair, and transparent. Mm. So it is our case. That is why we are asserting, and they will cross-examine us on that. Right. Unfortunately, I've run out of time. Many thanks to you, ladies and gentlemen. Gloria Kufu, spokesperson for the petitioner's legal team, and Victor Kojuga Adaudu, spokesperson for the NDC legal team. That will be for Top Story this evening. Top Story is brought to you by Bond Financial Services, your success are fashion. Belacqua Mineral Water, the new generation mineral water. Live Voice, so still offers you 100% better gem protection. Star Life Assurance, Rules Limited, and MyJoyOnline.com. I'm Francis Avenue.